and there is a good look at the field for our final national championship to be decided formula atlantic that car right there he's going to be carrying the onboard for us young paul lecane here's the rest of the field as they we do the walk by here of this great group of cars if you watch the cool toyota atlantic championship down to some of those races you recognize those ralts now we got some swift there's kevin furline remember we met him earlier in that ancient ralt rt4 the rest of the pack making their way out on track for our 19 lap final national championship to be decided there we are paul lecane he is a very talented young driver and uh, he has had a couple of tough breaks over the years coming up here but he won in the northeastern division this year with five wins and he had nine counting last year nine national wins in a row so he is absolutely ready to go problem is he's got one guy in front of him and it's a very quick driver in the form of bj zacharias very talented driver he was the formula continental national championship uh, winner last year let's take a look at the toyota starting grid there's bj up front he was almost two and a half seconds a lap quicker than anybody else in qualifying. Weather may have played a little role there. Paul Lacane, second. He'll be our camera car. Mark Rodriguez, Jason Greggs, and uh, John Willamy. That's your top five. But Kevin Furline, watch him from six in that old Ralt. He is the, easily the most exciting driver out there throwing that car around. Here's the rest of the field, and uh, this should be a good one. And even though we've got that huge margin, uh, keep in mind that uh, some of the cars, they said once in practice that uh, they were able to run uh, particularly... Uh, the number 90 car of Lacane was able to run within a half second of, of the lead car of B.J. Zacharias. So there is hope that uh, they're going to be able to get right in there and give him a bit of a race. Well, this class is the highest technology class that there is in all of the sports car racing. And what that basically means is that if you have a one-year-old car, you can have basically a brick compared to what we have here. There's all the guys on the starter stand there testing the, the integrity of the engineering of that piece. I can tell you that. <laughs> Speaking of engineering, that car on the pole up there, B.J. Zacharias, that's uh, RT-41 Ralt, state-of-the-art stuff. He is going to be a very fast guy working at the five car. That's Brian Westerlund. Brian Westerlund comes out of uh, British Columbia, Canada, the Blue Star Motors entry. We're going to take a little bit uh, more of an in-depth look at Brian. Well, long toe honors at the SCCA runoffs have to go to Brian Westerlund, who has come all the way from Vancouver, B.C., Canada. How long did it take you to get here? Took us 48 long hours. How'd you occupy the time? Well, we bought a TV and a VCR and uh, watched some movies as we drove along, mounted it on the dashboard, made it a little bit more enjoyable for sure. You made it here safely, though. Now, I've got to ask you, you've got the blonde hair, the open-wheel driver from Canada. Any of that modeled after Jacques? Uh, not, too, not too much. No, I went with black about a month and a half ago, and all the women hated it. Everybody thought I looked a little too evil, so I went to white, a little bit more calmer. And uh, the women seem to like a little bit more, so I'm laughing. <laughs> All right, so that's, that's what's behind it. Now, I've got to ask you about this. What is that? Loser inside the cockpit of a race car driver. What's up with that? Uh, we pretty much put that on there because we knew it, I'd look like a loser in this interview, so <laughs> we went with it. <laughs> well, we think you're doing just fine, and we're glad to have you here, man. Good luck. Cheers. <laughs> well, they're having a good time with their program, obviously. And I suppose after a 48-hour uh, drive to get here, you're, you're going to feel a little dingy for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, the crew guys sometimes, they're your best friend for sure, but they can be your worst enemy sometimes, oh, too. Oh, man, yeah, when they know you're going on camera, it can sometimes be not too pretty. Interesting look at that one car you may have saw it there. That is an older Ralt that a uh, guy has done some engineering on. There's a good look at Brian, by the way. But uh, he had devised a rear body cover for the car, and in qualifying, it ignited. We'll show you that car a little later on. It ignited, and he didn't have a backup for it. And he's got an unusual roll cage on the car on top of it, so he's going to be running with a very unique look here as uh, we get back and underway with it, dude. That red nine car we just saw, Dan Carmichael. Dan Carmichael is a cool 79. 79 years old. He is a former national champion. He's in the middle of the grid. And he just can't get out of these cars. He absolutely loves them. A former fighter pilot. The guy obviously uh, knows how to deal with high speeds and everything, but at 79, there he is, number nine right there, 79 years old. Just a couple of uh, months shy of an 80th birthday, and he is just flat quick. Former champ. Oh! We're getting a wave off, it looks like. Starter did not like the look of the field, so they're going to have to go around one more time. And it looked like some of them in the mid-pack, Dorsey, they were starting to go a little bit, jockey around, and you can't make any kind of move until you see the green. Well, I personally think it's all that distraction up there in the booth with the guy. It was the last race of the entire weekend. All of them got green. He had to use his power of the weekend and say, no, you're not starting. Do you think that? No. I'm <laughs> I think he's probably right. Okay. <laughs> 
they just had to not let him go, you know? Exactly. I mean, it's a miracle. We don't have any other more uh, uh, non 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 stop. Well, it, it, we have been very fortunate in everything going green uh, throughout the weekend. So there we are on board with Paul LeCane, and he's looking at the back of BJ's uh, Rawl chassis. And that, of course, the car, if you've watched the Atlantics, that uh, Tony Ave did uh, a couple of seasons in the Pro Series with, with Uwe Olsen's team. So it's a very well-sorted car, well-sorted program. And uh, that's one of the reasons that everybody's chasing him rather thoroughly right now. And Paul, the one who's been able to do that best so far. Darcy Schrader, you, of course, uh, spent a lot of seasons racing these cars. Started uh, in what was called Formula B, and then they became Atlantic, and uh, you've been behind the wheel of these cars. Uh, talk about driving one of these things. Well, these cars are really, really great fun to drive. In fact, we were talking about Dan Carmichael before. I, I ran against Dan from 73 on. I, my last time in one of these cars was 82. These make tremendous downforce. They're full aerodynamic downforce cars. They have very big tires. You can see right there. They do not have a lot of horsepower. 1,600 cc motors put out about 250 horsepower uh, corner speeds are faster than any other car here and these are the very fastest race car tracks on the racetrack absolutely and uh, Uwe Olsen who cruised the BJ uh, Zacharias car is standing by with Bobby Gerald yes he is he's anticipating this start here and uh, I mean what's your biggest worry right now before a green flag make it to turn nine making it to turn nine well at least you're ahead of everyone to start with huh but still they hit you from behind that's the biggest problem you have so you just got to hammer down into turn one real hard oh no they start in the back so it's six, eight eight and nine if you make it to nine i think it'll be okay all right new bales and says that's going to be the key for bj once he gets out there he should just be like a rabbit all right well we'll watch and see what happens here we are on board now looking backward from paul lacane's car and we are coming up to the uh Start flag here, we hope this time. Now, this lap that they ran does count, so when we go green, assuming it's this time, we'll have 18 laps to go. These are the fastest cars out there. These laps go quick green. We are green and underway with the last national championship race of the day. Oh, look at that move down to the inside. Cars fanning around a little bit. And look at that move and a trip, not there. And that was the number 12 car of Rodriguez, and it just didn't quite pay, but hey, you gotta try. Cold yeah, tires. did too. work too, right down the inside, three abreast there going into turn six. This is what Uwe meant when he says they can get to turn nine. Well, that's eight. This is nine coming up. Car off at the top of the hill. We had one problem with the very, very last car, somebody up there. Now we're looking backward from Lacane. That's number 81 of oh, the John C. N. car of John Villamy. He's qualified fifth. And, uh, oh boy, he looks like he's pulling it over and stopping it. And also, I noticed that Kevin Furline, who was sixth, is fourth right now. See? That red car, fourth in the order. So a great start there. And that car, that's the, that car did make the move around Paul LeCain. That is the Mazda-powered, the first Mazda-powered Rolf chassis ever. And they've done a little work on that car as well. And uh, in a straight line, that car is a missile. And there's BJ. There goes Rodriguez. There's LeCain and the camera car working through turn one. And look at the sun in turn one. Right now, you go underneath that bridge, and you go right smack into the sun. Can't see a darn thing. Go into the sun two or three times. Another one right here as you come into this final crucial turn before the straight. Look at it glinting up the racetrack there, glinting up there. Make sure their visors are all absolutely spotless and scratchless. Down that long straightaway. Cars, 160 mile an hour down here. Door City's in the cars. Yeah, I would think upper 150s or so. These cars do make a lot of downforce. They also make a lot of... Uh, of drag because of that. Terrific a grip. twitchy there under braking. Yeah, yeah terrific yeah. grip, and they put the brakes on with these cars, too. They don't weigh much. They have a lot of downforce, as Dorsey said. But, I mean, they just really do stick like, well, you know what. Ooh, There's the battle for fourth. That is, uh, again, Kevin Furline in that old RT4. And, oh, that was very close. Now back to Furline, and he is hanging on over number three, Jason Greggs. And here's that car I was telling you about a little bit earlier. Look at the, uh, it almost looks like a super modified. And what happened again, uh, we'll get back to, there he is, that first car in that line. He's got a very unique rear engine cover on that car. Well, let's go back to this battle. It's Furline under huge attack now from number three, Jason Greggs, the battle for fourth. And behind them, coming on, is also number five, who started in the eighth spot. That's Brian Westerland. So I don't think loser applies. That guy had a great opening couple laps. And we saw earlier in our open that Kevin Furline, that old RT4, he said all he can do is put his right foot down and just hustle it around, do what he can. And he does amazing things with that car. Holding off Jason Greggs in the three car. And that three car is a near state-of-the-art Ralt uh, current stuff. And again, that ancient Ralt doing the job. And right there now, up to fifth is Westerland, who we visited with earlier, having a great 
run. Boy, you have a good finish. It makes that 48-hour drive back a lot more palatable. Yeah, that's still going to be a long... Oh, look, at here we go, 97. Furline goes to the inside, down into the brake zone. He's going to get right down to the inside here. Not as good a braking as... Uh, Three, the Jason brakes car pulls around, and there's a go into turn six. Close together as they come up over two into madness here. There's that next battle. There's number 26, David Vandenberg, I was telling you about. And uh, he's got that sprint car sort of roll cage in the car, and then that rear deck caught fire during qualifying, and they didn't have another one, so he's running uh, with a rather unique look to it. Meanwhile, there is the battle, and oh, 89. Problem for that machine. Dennis Sidiri out of Uniontown, Ohio, has pulled off, and he's running uh, the lone Griffith, a unique chassis in this category. There is Furline, and here comes number five, Brian Westerlin. A young Canadian really starting to put the pressure on as they come onto that front straight. He, of course, is a Swift, a DB4 Swift, right under Furline's tail as they go into turn one, the fastest corner here. These oh, oh, Furline spins. Oh, wow. Boy, he was lucky there. Clipped the wing on that curb, whipped the wing off, Gosh, and man. slid back through the field and never hit anybody. That's the amazing thing. Woo. No contact. He's going to continue, but he's lost. The wing is still there. It's Nose just covering. Is gone too. It's gone. Yeah. Look here. Watch this. Good. You want to talk about close. It's not just the spin that I'm worried about. Watch the car behind him. When he goes, he rotates right here. He's loose on the entry. Got opposite lock in there. Locks the brakes. Good thing here, because watch how close he comes to hitting this car. Wow. Oh, look at how close Westland that was. That was. Now watch here, it looked like he got into that corner a little wide. There goes the nose cone and Westerlin. Wow, it's a savvy piece of driving. He right on the edge of the track. Oh, snuck through. Our young Canadian friend did a whale of a save. He right did there. a whale of a save. He Look how know wide Furline is though coming in here. It looked like he turned in late, missed his turn in maybe. Oh! I think he just lost it now. That would have been catastrophic if he hit him right then, I'll tell you that. Yeah, and uh, now what, obviously, Furline is, is at a disadvantage in terms of handling anyway. He did continue. Without that nose piece on, there's a, an awful lot of exposed opening and stuff. That car is going to be very slow down the straights, and uh, it, uh, it's lacking in downforce to start with. Yeah, you know, I was going to say he drives the wheels off this car, but in fact, he's driven the nose off this car. Well, right now, uh, his dad is standing by with Bobby Gerald. Bobby? Well, Alan right now is waiting, I think, to see if Kevin's going to stay out on the racetrack or try to duck into the pits. We understand that the front front nose is missing on the car right now. Do you guys have any spares in the pits? Yeah. If it's gone, we don't have another one. So he'll just have to make do, huh? He'll have to make do. Uh, here he comes now. Oh, you got God. a good look at it that time by. How, do you think you'll be able to race with that? He'll race with that. He'll race with it. He's already got that old chassis, and now he's at a, even a little further disadvantage, guys. Yeah, well, I was going to say, he's got that Rawl. He can race with it. That's the battle for 1247. It's Kenny Suede, and he is hanging on, driving uh, one of those Swifts. And uh, behind him, coming on pretty strong, is the number 15 entry right now, and that's Gary Turnbull. And those two having a very spirited duel as well. There that's he is. That's another one of the older RT4s, like Furline had. So, obviously, at a slight disadvantage to the uh, RT41s of B.J. Zacharias. Yeah, that second car was actually 14. Doug Rocco having a good run. There's your top five. We'll be back here for more Formula Atlantic action in a minute. Formula Atlantic, last of the 23 races that are unfolding as part of the 1998 SCCA run-ups, 35th edition of this great national championship, the Olympics of motorsports, and the guy going after the last gold medal and looking strong right now is the uh, gentleman who won the gold medal at Formula Continental last year, B.J. Zacharias, and he is absolutely hooked up in that Uwe Olsen prep Formula Atlantic car, that one of the waltz with the Toyota power plant in it, and uh, he is awfully strong, but there is some great racing to be found, and uh, right now, coming on to that front stretch, Straight. That is the battle between number three, Jason Greggs, and Brian Westerland. And uh, they are having a good show. We've also got a good, strong battle going in fifth. Number 19, Bernie Sunnier, in the Dynaquip Control Swift, is uh, struggling right now. And uh, he's under pressure from uh, uh, number five, uh, that's Westerland, actually. And, uh, boy, good battle raging right now. Bernie Sunnier, a guy that I spent many, many years driving against in the Midwest Division in this very same class. A lot of experience with Bernie in these uh, open-wheel cars. 
Second right now, by the way, is number 12, Mark Rodriguez, and that Mazda-powered entry in our camera car, Lacane, is third. But this is a good scrap we're watching here. Coming up with some lap traffic, and no problem there, as he just pops out, does Jason Gregson, makes the move. And there is number five, Brian Westerland, that young Canadian hot shoe. And uh, he caught that traffic at a, at a bad time, because he's going to have to go way out and around him. Yeah, very bad. Lost a lot of momentum there going through those two... Uh important corners time-wise and of course you can't do much overtaking through there but they're very important to get a good lap time you had to go wide around that guy and lost uh, quite a bit of time there in terms oh look at here comes lacane coming out of the final turn the carousel and on the front straight now watch the sun when they get to turn one this is unbelievable it's okay here under the bridge you go then bait now the problem with that is you can't see that curve you touch that curve at this speed and you've got a very bad thing happening. and then we'll see it again right here then really bad again as they come into this corner here. And there's that curve on the inside. Big gravel trap on the outside. As Paul Lacane runs in a solid third. All right, we're going to go back, take a look at the battle for seventh. That is number 26, David Vandenberg. These are the two Ralt RT4s, two oldest chassis there. There's Vandenberg's where he's done that engineering by himself, got that trick roll cage in there, and he's running Sands engine cover. And uh, then here comes nine. That's Dan Carmichael. And again, 79 years old and uh, running a competitive top 10 battle here in Formula Atlantic. <laughs> this guy is just truly amazing. It's unbelievable. I think it's 79 years young. He's 20 years older than me. Twist is 20 years older than me. <laughs> David's enjoying this one a lot. Folks. I can hardly walk from the booth to the restroom. There he is driving around in the former Atlantic. Oh, he is hustling it too. By the way, that second card in your picture right there is 41, John Murphy. And uh, he's the guy that right now is raising the 26, David Vandenberg. And uh, they've been at, it, at each other pretty much for the whole race. They found each other early on the track. And uh, I'll tell you, Vandenberg uh, won that car without that, that engine cover. Whoa, there's a big the wheel up on that there. curb. These are big square tires. You get them up on those curbs. They're not very keen on that. But Vandenberg, that car has to be aerodynamically awfully weak right now. Look at the big muffler cover. that he runs. I take it that's a Mazda motor in there. That's probably why he had to fire. Mazda's put out tremendous heat. You see the huge size of that muffler, and that thing is just glowing red hot, and that's probably what caused him to lose that injury cover earlier this week. Yeah, it was a definite problem for him. By the way, the margin at the front, almost eight seconds right now. There's a good look at 41 Murphy out of Bolt, Connecticut, six in the Northeastern Division, and the Taylor Rental. Who's your tires, Ralt? And he is having a strong run. And let's go back now to Dan Carmichael. There he is. Now, he's running one of the uh, Ralt RT40s, and they haven't done that last update kit that raised the nose that some of the other guys are running. That's the drop nose Ralt. Still, though, a very effective car and doing a nice job here. Now, he won. In, uh, of course, in 1995, he won the championship, the national championship, in a remarkable run when he was, I think, 76 years old. So national champion at 76, that's a remarkable story. And the fact he's still going after Dorsey and running top 10 is amazing. He's yeah. winding these two guys in. He's winding Vandenberg and Murphy in. He was quite a few seconds behind them, a couple of laps back. Now he's right with them. Well, and we have to really, I think, go back to the qualifying. And there was rain, and uh, it, even on the days when it wasn't raining, it was incredibly cool here for a couple of days during the long week of practice. And he may just not have been able to get the job done uh, in qualifying, but he is charging right now, and he's going to come through and start picking these guys off. I think he's got a little experience with that. In World War II, he was a combat fighter ace, which means he got a number of uh, kills in that uh, in that. Uh, uh, over there, so the guy obviously just likes to get out there and mix it up. Well, he shouldn't bother. I mean, if you did it, he, he wouldn't mind punting him. Oh, no, oh, <laughs> being the, we hear from Dorsey again. Dorsey's ready to punt school. <laughs> you know, when I ran this class, all of the cars had the same motor. Now, this is something new in Formula Atlantic in the last year or two. Is that there's different things. Of course, Dan Carmichael right there has a Toyota motor, and they run a 1600 cc fuel injected motor or carbureted motor. Some of the old ones, when I drove it, it was a Ford Cosworth 1600 cc. Now we've got Mazda motors in there. Look at Carmichael taking a position. Going down the inside of Murphy there into. He was thinking of, he was he was thinking about taking Vandenberg as well. Yeah, <laughs> that was sort of. Oh, slower traffic in front. That was sort of a young man. You best respect your elders. <laughs> or I will thrash you. Boy, he is closing on Vandenberg big time as well. And I don't think Vandenberg's long uh, for the attack here. I think uh, Carmichael's going to work by him. He is just flying. We asked him, of course, 
if he could uh, if he had the in-car camera for us and he said well the only trouble with that was the radio frequency might upset his pacemaker so <laughs> <laughs> Carmichael really closing up now on Vandenberg, working through the carousel and look at him. Starting to apply the pressure. That will, this is the battle right here for seventh at this point. And I think Carmichael might even get him as soon as turn one. There he goes, makes the move. Hey, I know, Down the to the inside. Whoa, oh, Vandenberg fighting him out. Oh. Across the curb, ran up on the curb. Well, he lost momentum there, so he needs to be careful now that Murphy doesn't get by him again before they get to Chicane. So the old pacemaker going overtime right now as he went over that curb. That was probably due to the sunlight. He both went in there and they got up from underneath the bridge and they probably lost where that curb was. You just can't see. It's blind. Take a look at it again. Pops to the inside. No problem here. He's already alongside before. Now they're in a dark spot. They come out. You can't see that curb, remember. And watch Carmichael. He's going to hit that and the car's going to loosen up right here. Boy, it moved that car quite a bit, didn't it? Yeah, Vandenberg didn't see him and... Uh... Well, just that. Well, look at Vanderbilt fight back around the outside. But Carmichael, he now can keep Carmichael. the front. Nope. Ah. He was on the up there. He would have been on the inside for this turn here, turn seven, eight. And all the while, David, as you pointed out, 41 Murphy loving this because it's brought him right back into the battle. Yeah. Now heading down, they got uh, through here, over the ride. Oh, wiggle there from Vandenberg. And he's feeling the heat from Carmichael, that's obvious. Well, Vandenberg, you know, he built that roll cage himself. I hope he doesn't have to see if it works. But if they get very much closer, something's going to happen. <laughs> and they are racing very Dorsey, close. Dorsey, Dorsey looking on the bright side, as always. <laughs> I'm Mr. Been, positive here. I'm positive, I know I'm sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're right. Are you going to have another go into turn one? Yes, Boy, he yes. doesn't give up, does he? See, Sparks oh, got him this time. Oh, yeah. Yes, he did. Very good job. Nice pass there by... Dan Carmichael. Well, practice makes perfect. He tested the waters once, figured out what he needed to do. But I think the key was he got out of the carousel just a little bit better, got a better run. Yeah. And so he now has taken over sole possession of seventh position with Vandenberg and then Murphy in eighth and ninth. That's the group we're watching. And look at Carmichael drawing it away. We're going to uh, step back. We've got 12 laps done here in Formula Atlantic competition. You just love those fantastic...